All right, we're doing math and we're game developers. And this week we're going to try and put together all the stuff we've learned so far to do something really cool. We left off in one of our previous videos uh, where we, we took our scene and using a camera matrix, we transformed it so that the camera was here, E, at the origin. And then our scene, our, our junk, our pictures, we're here in the negative Z area. And that's good because that's the way that uh, the hardware wants it to be for it to render. But we're not there yet because we still have to apply per per perspective. We kind of take that for granted because our, you know, everything is in perspective all around us, but we don't actually get perspective for free. We have to, we have to make it perspective. And so how do we do that? Well, let's look at a special type of camera, one of the earliest types of cameras, called a pinhole camera or a camera obscura. See, there's a little pinhole right here, and then when light rays come in, like so, drawing them left to right, but here we are. They go right to left, they come through the pinhole, and they make a an image here on the film on the left. And you get an image because any any light ray that doesn't go through the pinhole gets blocked. And so you only get the the light rays that will that will focus through this pinhole and form an image. It's pretty cool. But you have this problem where the light rays from the top hit the bottom of the film and the light rays from the bottom hit the top of the film. And so you get your your images reversed. We don't want that. So we're going to use the power of math here to reverse that. Here's going to be our film in front. Our film is going to be in front. And our eye is going to be in back. Here's our eye. And just like before, we're going to put our eye here at the origin. This will be the Y axis. The Z axis will be, I'm sorry, not the Z, but the X axis will be coming out towards you, like out of your monitor. We're looking side on, and here's the Z axis. Actually, that'll be the negative Z axis. So here's all our stuff from before. Here's our scene. That's supposed to be a heart, but yeah, sorry. <laughs> here's our scene, and so what we want to do is take any, any point right here, P, and project it onto our film. Here we go, P star. P star is the projected version of P. And any point out here that we project onto this film, we will have in perspective. So that's the goal. And how do we do it? Well, let's say that this mark right here, where the film is, we'll put that at negative one. So what we're really doing is we're projecting our point P onto this film such that the Z coordinate is negative one. And I'll show you how that works. Here's our point P, it's gonna be X, Y, Z, one. Remember from the previous video we discussed, this one is the homogeneous coordinate. It means that the vector is a position as opposed to a direction. We want to transform it such that we have some x star and y star and then negative one right here. That's what we want. So we want, this is p, this is p star and this is p. So how do we do this projection? How do we do it? Well we're going to use another kind of homogeneous uh, coordinate where the W value right here is not equal to one. It can actually be anything. And I'll show you how it works. If we have a vector X, Y, Z, W, like this, and we do the homogeneous transform to it, we get X over W, Y over W, Z over W.
So a homogeneous vector is a vector with this fourth coordinate w that gets divided through all the other coordinates. And the hardware will actually do, a, do this for us for free. If we pass it a coordinate, uh, if we, if we pack, pass it a homogeneous vector, it'll divide by w for us, which is really great because we can use this homogeneous property to do this perspective. So notice how, notice how essentially what you're doing is you're scaling the vector by one over w, one over w. So let's go to another color. What we want, what we want is to get, is to get a vector right here where the z component is negative one. Here's our point and we want to scale it using this homogeneous property so that the z component is negative one. But we're starting with this vector right here. X, Y, Z, and then what homogeneous, what W value are we gonna give it? So that when we do this operation, we get a negative one here. And, and the, this is the Z, this is Y, this is X, and this is W down here. Well, so this is gonna be Z, and then it's going to get divided by whatever is right here. We want negative 1, so there can only be one thing here. Negative z. Negative z. So you can see that you're going to have x over negative z, y over negative z, and then z over negative z, which is just negative 1. So how do we go about constructing a matrix that can do this for you? We want to take this p right here, Okay, and we want to make a vector like this out of it that we can pass into the hardware so that it can do this homogeneous transform for us. So let's take a look at this. Let's construct a matrix that we're going to multiply by our vector and get, I'm out of room here, but, and get this guy. I'll just squeeze it in. Equals. So what we want is x, y, z, negative z. And what we have is x, y, z, 1. So when we do matrix multiplication by a vector, we go across the top row and down the vector like this. So what times x should equal x? 1. And then we don't want any y, so 0 times y will add into this. 0 times z and 0 times 1. So all we'll have is the 1 times the x. Let's do it again for y. Now we're going out across the second row and down the vector like this. So 0 times x, because we're making this guy, we don't want any x anymore. We do want a y. We don't want z and we don't want 1. Now let's make z. Same thing. No x, no y, 1 z, no 1. Now to make this guy, we don't want x, we don't want y, but we do want a z, but we want a negative z. So negative 1 times z will get us negative z, and we don't want this 1. So this right here is the simplest per, I keep saying uh, projection when I mean perspective, perspective matrix. And that is some serious progress in the area of getting us some perspective. But the problem is that everything will be projected down to this single plane right here. And actually, if, if we do that, then we won't be able to use some, some of the more advanced OpenGL features like Z-buffering. So what we want to actually do is project it into a box like this. Our scene will be projected but inside a box, if that makes sense. So we actually need to change this perspective matrix a little bit, uh, modify it to, to handle that. And it's not that challenging, but 
we'll have to go to it in the next video.